everybody. Gene from jeansgreenmachine.com. This may look like an ordinary old toolbox. Um, 10 bucks from Lowe's, but hey, uh, it actually is my new battery box. Um, so what I've done here is actually built myself, uh, you can call it a solar generator, call it a portable power supply, whatever you want to call it. Two LifePo4 batteries are the same. They're eight amp hour. Uh, I should have gone with a, the 16 amp hour ones. Uh, they would still fit. Um, I've got two two power pole connectors here to um, bring in my input from my pedal generator. Um, so that'll go directly to these batteries. Um, and then uh, the rest goes over to these different um, ports over here. So I've got a switch to turn it on. Um, a meter to kind of tell us what the uh, reading is on the battery, and then um, all the sockets there. So the switch actually disconnects all the sockets, um, including this um, USB port that's down here. I got two USB ports, but um, I can also plug in, you know, these socket adapters, which are um, generally a little more efficient, um, uh, more powerful than uh, these. these Kind of built-in ones but that works for for general purposes um, and i can also i didn't build in an inverter into it uh, but you can also plug an inverter in there uh, through one of these uh, through the sockets that we have in there um, i generally don't use the inverter um, i'll use uh, actually for my laptop i have a dc to dc um, automotive plug uh, that's that's more efficient the um, these inverters dc to ac uh, they're about 80% efficient, which isn't very efficient. So um, I'd stay away from those if you can. Um, so then this wiring looks a little crazy here, but uh, just to give you a picture of what's actually going on there. Uh, so I've got the input, which is where, you know, like I said, I'm using my pedal generator with a charge controller, but I go into these two batteries. Uh, they're, they're wired uh, in parallel so that they're, uh, so we're still only going, you know, 14.4 volts. Um, and we go over to the uh, the switch, which turns on the meter um, and also um, engages the low volt disconnect. Um, that guy's down in there. Um, so I've got him set at 11.4 volts. So um, I don't these these batteries actually have a, a built-in BMS uh, and will will stop uh, outputting after uh, 10 volts. But I don't want them going that low. Um, so, uh, I added the low volt disconnect, uh, just to kind of make my batteries last a little bit longer. Um, and then I, I come out to all the different sockets. Um, I use these Wago, um, uh, lever, lever nuts. They actually work pretty well and make these putting together, you know, this, this kind of thing a lot easier. Um, I end up using, you know, the fives, uh, I got, I got six of those, of these, uh, five connector ones in there. Um, but they do the trick. Um and they seem to grip pretty well. I've tried the knockoff ones. They tend to be a little funky and not grip as well. Um, so stick with the name brand if, uh, if you can. Um, so then we could also add, we could do solar. Um, I, <clears throat> I don't plan on charging these with solar except for maybe a trickle charger in the summertime, um, but you can add a, a, a solar charge controller. Um, <clears throat> actually, this one will fit right in there. And so then I would wire from the input over to the uh, the solar port over here. Wire batteries go to there, and load go over to the to the ports, you know, to the uh, um, uh, output ports over there. So uh, you could certainly add a solar charge controller if you wanted to. Um, I uh, tried using this with my pedal generator, and for whatever reason, this didn't work. Um, so. I don't know if it's because that's the type of charger it is. Um, in any case, uh, I'm, I'm leaving that out um, of my design, but you certainly could add it if that's the method you're gonna use to actually um, build this kind of a um, solar generator. Anyway, um, so the, the one of the key drivers for me was a lot of those battery banks only take 40, 60 watts of power. Um, these batteries, these life four, ba four batteries will actually take up to uh, 10 amps each, which is a significant amount of, of amperage. Um, uh, I don't want to push it at that peak. I want to be able to put 100 to 200 watts into this 
uh, battery bank, and I can uh, actually I've been able to get. I, I do like the way I have it wired and the way my charge controller is set up. Uh, the one I charge controller I used, it's uh, it's uh, it'll go up to 215 watts or so uh, going into this, which it's kind of on the high side. I don't want to do that for a long period of time, and I personally can't <laughs> do that for a long period of time. Um, so uh, uh, I will just. Um, you typically go 150 watts or, you know, between 100 and 150 watts um, going into this battery bank, um, which will charge it relatively quickly. Um, one of the things I was worried about was, you know, having this all closed up and charging it, um, that the batteries would start to get warm. Um, and actually I found that they uh, were basically room temperature when I charged it about 140 watts for 30 minutes. Um, didn't really have any, any temperature increase inside the box uh, the batteries felt felt cool to the touch so uh so there you have it um this is my portable battery bank uh, so hope you like it thanks